So a little about myself. I'm Akshay Jemini, an undergraduate engineering student from India. And I joined the Postgres community pretty recently, like this year only. And I love open source. I got into it uh, while I was 14 years old. I started using Linux. Right now, I'm using Windows for some reason, because Linux was not working. So yeah, let's ignore that. And I'm also a metalhead. So any of the metalheads out there, I love you guys. So a little bit about the project and as well as GSOC, because it is what made it possible. So GSOC stands for Google Summer of Code program. Postgres has been a part of this program since 2006. And uh, this particular project, uh, the testing harness that we are going to talk about, was proposed back in uh, 2021. And it finally picked up pace in 2023. There were some discussions earlier uh, in 2022, I guess, uh, for during the GSOC uh, period. But uh, nothing happened. And the goal was to develop a relatively simple to use CI framework uh, that was completely separate uh, from the PG web code base. So what we're going to talk about today. First of all, what is PG Web? So uh, a show of hands, how many of you know what PG Web is? Yeah, Stephen. <laughs> OK. So we also uh, will go through why do we need to test this uh, code base? Like, what is there to test? And how the hardness is working? And where do we plan to be in the future? So what is PG Web? So as you uh, might know or might not know, uh, PG Web is the code base for our official website, PostgreSQL.org. So everything about Postgres that uh, you can know is there on the website. Uh, a brief overview of the, uh, repos of the entire code base. It is composed of two repositories. One is like PGWeb, which contains the primary functionalities of the website, and PGWeb static, uh, which contains all the static content for the website. Like, and we have the authentication utilities uh, present in that website that are not only used in PostgreSQL.org, but they're also used across uh, most of the platforms that Postgres is hosting. Uh, we have over 40 plus database table schemas in this single code base uh, that are running on Postgres. And we also have multiple internal toolings like uh, automated script to load your, the entire documentation that comes with your release. And we also have links to other PG web websites. So the ultimate question is, why do we need to test PG web in the first place? Uh, it's a website, right? Uh, what can you expect to change in a website over time? So uh, let's take an example. Suppose uh, there is a person uh, who does not know about Postgres. He wants to like just explore uh, what is there. So he'll obviously go to our website to know about the entire thing. Secondly, he'll want to try uh, our database. So he'll obviously download the installer according to his operating system. Then uh, we have the documentation, uh, which he'll probably go through to just check uh, how do I use this thing. Let's say he uh, liked it a lot. He wants to build a product on top of it. So they, they can register uh, that particular product on our official website. Uh, let's say he liked it even more, wants to host an event uh, related to Postgres, or wants to attend any events that are related to Postgres in any way. They are also available on our website. And Let's say he submitted any content, like any article related to Postgres or any events uh, that are related to it. So obviously, the administration needs to approve that. So we have the admin panel for that as well. Uh, let's say he finds some problems with our database. They can easily report that on our website, or they can also contact the mailing list, as we all do. And there's a lot more uh, that is present in the website. And it is all powered uh, by a single uh, Django code base with Postgres as a supporting database. So some of the problems that we noticed in this particular code base were, first of all, it is really difficult to debug. The code base is pretty huge. Uh, it's a nightmare to debug that entire thing. Secondly, uh, there are new patches uh, that come for the website, but uh, they are not usually tested. Like uh, The contributors test them on the local machines, uh, but it is not uh, what we actually require. Like There should be some sort of central uh, place where everything is passed. And Last but not least, we have no archives for any previous bugs for PG Web. Uh, while developing this tool, uh, I had to dig through the email archives to like, get some bugs there. So this is what we uh, wanted to tackle. And our ultimate conclusions were the, code ba the PG Web code base is an integral part of Postgres. Uh, it is essentially the first point of contact for any person who wants to uh, know about Postgres or anything related to Postgres. Uh, the code base is huge, as I mentioned earlier. It is relatively difficult to debug, and we need 
test-driven development for this entire process. Welcome the harness, uh, which I like to call the savior for PG web devs. Uh, while developing this, we had uh, certain things in our mind. First of all, we wanted to monitor the activities in the repository. But uh, we did not want to add any additional code uh, to the PG web code base because that would have just increased the complexity more. So we wanted to keep that in a separate repository. We also wanted to test the essential web forms because most of the things that are happening on the website are just user interaction and everything. We also wanted to test the authentication uh, portions because, as I said earlier, they are powering most of the Postgres platforms right now. We also wanted to test the documentation loading pipeline. And we also wanted to report some dead URLs or any other resources that are uh, present on the website. And ultimately, complain about these errors to the concerned individuals. I usually prefer to complain to Magnus about them. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, let's see. There were some other features uh, that we were not able to add, like we are working on them. So we want the ability to test any build of the website. Like you can just put in the commit ID and we'll uh, test that build. We also want to add the security tests. Uh, uh, we also want to archive bugs. Like currently, it is happening in a manner, but uh, it is not completely uh, done. And all of this is happening in a plug and play format. So if you have any uh, patches that you want to submit for PG Web, you can, uh, you can just submit that patch and write a really small test for it. We have a complete template in our readme, and you can follow that, and uh, your patch will be tested and all, all, all of that. So let's come to the question, how are we doing all of this? So first of all, uh, as I mentioned earlier, PG Web, uh, the testing harness is a separate repository than the uh, main PG Web code base. Uh, since PG Web is built uh, using Django, we are utilizing the test case classes that are present in the Django framework. Uh, we are also using Selenium for functional testing. Uh, so how many of you know Selenium? Yeah, great. Uh, so like, uh, just to summarize, Selenium uh, is, you can say, a tool to mock up your UIs, uh, UIs uh, automatically, right? Uh, then we have uh, Django RM that we are using to access the database. Uh, we intend to change this because it, is, uh, it increases cohesion with the PG web code base, but uh, we'll see to that later. We are using UnLighthouse, which is a fork of the Lighthouse uh, tool by Google uh, to conduct all accessibility tests on our website. And uh, currently, we are using Palm API to, san uh, to sanitize our reports uh, that are generated from the harness and uh, suggest some possible troubleshooting steps. We'll eventually replace this with some, some other LM because uh, we don't want to rely on Google for that. And all of this is running in a, inside GitHub Actions, and that to inside a headless browser instance. Uh, let's get to the overview, like uh, what is the flow of the entire process? So first of all, as you can see, we, have the, we are monitoring the PG web repository. So uh, we'll come to this later, like it's in the next slide. We are checking for any new commits, and we, are current, we plan to run these three tests. We are currently running the two, one, the, these two, functional and accessibility. Like you'll hear me uh, saying these two a lot during the talk. And if there are any failures, we just send a complaint to Magnus. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it is, uh, I'll uh, go through the directory structure uh, to explain how the harness is working, because this is pretty integral to that. So as you can see, we have our workflows there. Uh, these workflows include the monitoring flow uh, and the ability to run the tests in the GitHub Actions. The SRC folder is the main place where, where all our tests are uh, present right now. And these are some other files uh, that will come in handy later. So as I was talking about the monitoring workflow, uh, this monitor.yaml file is just a GitHub workflow uh, supported by two bash scripts uh, that basically check the commit ID of the PG web code base. So there was a problem that we faced here. Since GitHub Actions creates a temporary uh, container for you, uh, you, need, you actually cannot store something there. So uh, we devised uh, a technique that we will uh, pull the PG web code base continuously uh, every six hours, and then check, uh, just check the commit ID using uh, the git commands. We have stored the previous commit ID in a local file uh, in the repository only, but we'll uh, probably shift that to some uh, other, other solution later on. And if there are any changes, we call uh, the test GitHub actions, update the commit value in that file, and uh, quit. Uh, so as I was talking about the test uh, action, the run test.yaml file consists uh, of uh, all the code to run the tests. 
So we have two loads that are running in parallel here. First of all, we have the accessibility tests here. And we have another load, uh, another uh, job to uh, run the functionality tests. Let's come to functional tests. Uh, so by functional tests, we mean that uh, whatever the client is seeing uh, on our website, that should be picture perfect. Like everything should work, uh, work, uh, work as intended. Uh, so this include your link. This can include your links, buttons, forms, and a lot of other UI elements. Uh, all of these functional tests are within the source folder uh, in the functional test uh, folder. And you can see that we have followed a certain schema here. This is to enable uh, Django to actually determine which of these files are actually intended for tests. Because if you go in the extra utilities folder, you will uh, find that there are multiple utilities that we have used to uh, like sort of set up the prerequisites for uh, these, uh, these tests. Uh, to explain the functional tests, I'll take a pretty simple example. Like this is on the lower end of the spectrum of the tests that we have written. Uh, so this is a pretty simple one. We have a form on the, on the Postgres website where we actually allow organizations that are related to Postgres to register themselves so that they can be shown on the website. And this is the form for that. So as you can see, I have labeled uh, uh, some IDs uh, with these fields. So these are basically the IDs that are generated uh, by Django when rendering this HTML. So what we have done? So we used Selenium to fetch the web page, uh, that is in this case, the organization form. And we are subsequently picking up each and, ele each and every element uh, using the IDs that are present here. So like in this uh, prefix plus field name, we uh, add the ID address, like this translates to this. And uh, then we uh, uh, have other various options for handling other UI elements, like this, is, this one is for a drop down. And then we end up clicking the submit button. And uh, as you all may know, that uh, after clicking that button, you, we have some changes that are reflected on the front end. We have uh, the data stored in the database. And uh, this is what uh, we actually need to confirm if the intended functionality worked properly. So here we have. Uh, Two things to two st things to verify. First, if this particular UI element was uh, rendered successfully on the next page, and do we have uh, the entry for database here in the database for that particular organization? So to check the front end, we uh, use Selenium again, and to check uh, if the database entry was successfully made, uh, we used uh, uh, the Django RM. Now, coming to the higher end of the spectrum, uh, this is the code from the uh, PostgreSQL website itself. The first place to go to uh, for any questions on PostgreSQL is its world renowned documentation. And it would be a shame if our documentation just went down one day and millions of people and thousands of people will uh, end up uh, complaining about it. So, we actually uh, needed to uh, check the entire pipeline that was rendering the documentation. So uh, for those of you who might, uh, I don't think if uh, a lot of you might be aware of this, but uh, our documentation is present in the uh, actual release tarball that, uh, is, uh, that comes with each and every release. And we are using an automated doc load script uh, that uh, pulls, the, uh, pulls the content out of that uh, documentation folder and uh, sets it up for the website. It downloads the document, uh, so we usually download the documentation, run, the, uh, run this particular docload.py script uh, uh, to upload the documentation on the Postgres website. Uh, like, this is the format to run it. And it basically decompresses the tarball file for the release, automatically tidies up the entire HTML content, and adds the docs uh, in the database. Like, uh, there is some me metadata that goes for the documentation in the uh, website, uh, along with the content. So to test this, we needed to automate this entire process that was actually running on the server of post, uh, on the server where the website is hosted. So uh, to fetch the latest releases, we use web scraping to find what all latest versions of Postgres do we have. And we usually we are currently scraping the FTP server because that is the place where we find the uh, latest releases. And after that, we download that documentation prepare the entries for the database, like, okay, this is version 16 point something, and this has this documentation, and it is being uploaded on the website. And we then run the doc load script uh, to upload the entire thing onto the website. So in our environment, uh, it is a development build that we are running, so we automate that uh, using, every, uh, using this. 
Now, we have uploaded the docs. So it's time to check if they were rendered properly, which was the ultimate goal of this test. So we have a simple Python script uh, that is use, utilizing beautiful soup uh, to, uh, extra, to actually search through the entire HTML content, pick up the place where all the documentation content is, conduct some validation on it, like, OK, if this has x number of, uh, uh, x number of uh, items in this particular segment or anything else, and then nav navigate automatically to the next button. But there was a problem. Doing it sequentially for each and every page of the documentation was really slow. The documentation is huge, and to do that for five simultaneous tasks was a difficult, was really slow. So we optimized it using multi-threading. So each documentation has its own thread that uh, that actually uh, enables uh, these nodes to work in parallel. We are facing the same issue again. Uh, like it was though, even after uh, parallelizing the loads, so we decided to use Beautiful Soup instead of Selenium uh, to reduce the time that it was taking. Because Selenium tends to be a little slow because it slows the entire web page, like entire CSS and all. So it, it is a little slow, and we ended up reducing our time from 20 plus hours to five hours and then to five minutes. So now the tests, uh, now all the tests, including the documentation tests, are completed within a span of 20 minutes. Now, uh, we talked about the functional testing, right? Uh, like, whatever the user is interacting with is working in the way it was intended to. But what about if the user is properly able to view that content? So here we have, uh, so here we have accessibility tests. Accessibility uh, is, usually, uh, the, uh, is usually to ensure that uh, any type of person, like even if some person has any kinds of disabilities or anything like that, can actually uh, use our website properly. And we have guidelines for that, which are the WCAG standards, uh, which have some violation, uh, which has some rules like you should not lack all text for images. There should be a consistent color contrast on the website, like 4.1, 4.5 is to 1 is the ratio that is specified for paragraphs in background. Uh, and also, the keyboard navigation should not be unusable. Like, uh, you should be able to navigate the entire website through tabs. Like, these are some of the prominent ones. Like, there are a lot of guidelines related to this. And we earlier we wanted to build an entire utility from scratch that would do this for us, like check all the ratio and all everything. But then we realized we already have tools for that. Unlighthouse, as I mentioned earlier, is a fork of Google Lighthouse. And the main difference here is that it is easy to integrate with the CI environment. Because uh, the harness is running inside GitHub Actions, and this actually uh, makes it easier for us to run, the, or run all the tests. Uh, we, are also conduct, we also conduct a site-wide uh, search. Like it scans each and every page uh, of the website and prepares a report uh, in an HTML format. Uh, we also, and ultimately, it's open source. So we, are, we obviously prefer it. As you saw that for functional tests, the list was pretty huge. Uh, but in case of accessibility tests, since we are using uh, this uh, tool, we only needed to set up a single bash script, uh, which would spin up a live development build of the website with dummy data to emulate the actual things that are happening. Now, to the ultimate part. We have found all these bugs, right? Uh, we found if there was some problem with interacting with the website. We found if there was something, really, something that would prevent someone from using our website. Now we need to collect all the reports that are generated by the tests. Then we check for any failures that are present uh, in those logs. Like we have a, a separate Python script for that. We just scan the entire, uh, entire logs for any failure warn or warnings. Then we are currently summarizing them using the Palm API. And it is pretty good at uh, suggesting solutions for them as well. So you can just say that, OK, there was a bug in line 21. You can fix it with this. And then we again complain to Magnus about this. And we, uh, ultimate, we are ultimately saving these reports uh, to prepare our archive. For now, we are using uh, artifacts in GitHub Actions, which are only valid up to 90 days. Uh, but we are soon planning to shift it to a permanent storage and subsequently create a web UI for you all to see that uh, entire thing. So the story so far. We understood what exactly is PG Web. We also uh, understood why do we need to test PG Web and how the hardness is helping in this task. And we also 
got into some details about some prominent tests like the documentation loading pipeline and even uh, the, org the organization form testing. And uh, let's talk about what's, uh, what we want to do uh, after this. So first of all, as I mentioned, we obviously need to archive the log reports. We are looking for a permanent storage solution for this. So if you guys have any suggestions, you're welcome to uh, start a discussion on a GitHub, GitHub repository. Uh, we also want to test the various builds of the repository, as I mentioned earlier. We also want to add security tests. And we need a better crawling mechanisms to validate uh, the URLs. So I'll go on a little tangent here. So we have. Uh, a crawling, uh, we have set up a web crawler that actually crawls the development build of the website right now uh, to check for any broken URLs, like, okay, it might be returning a 404 or a 500 and everything like that. So, but it's kind of faulty because we are not able to determine the depth to which we want to go inside the website. Like, uh, one time I remember when I was building this entire thing, it ended up crawling Twitter of Elon Musk, like, somehow it reached there. And uh, like, uh, so we uh, needed to limit the depth of that. And uh, we also need some methods to actually validate the content on PageWeb. Because uh, as far as the documentation is concerned, uh, we are currently just checking the uh, amount of content there is. Like, OK, there is some uh, mean, uh, mean amount of content that is present on a, on a documentation page. But we need something to validate the content. Like, uh, maybe some LMs can help out with this. I don't know. We'll figure it out. And we also want to extend this to other PostgreSQL websites. Right now, this is only working for PG Web, uh, and we'd like to make this work for the conference websites as well, like uh, the PG Conf U one or uh, the Planet website, and even the archiving list, archive lists. So, how can you help us with this? So, this is my humble request. If you add any patches to PG Web, you can uh, pl uh, please write a. Uh, test for them as well, because we are aiming to go towards a test-driven development uh, for this particular code base. We also insist you to check the hardness logs for any existing issues that are presently in the code base. Like, you can just pick, uh, check those logs and, OK, like this thing is not working, I'll fix it. You should also check the hardness logs once your patches get merged and try to compete with the harness. So basically, like, if you have free time, uh, you can just go on the website, uh, check if there is something wrong with it, and like, uh, report this to us, and we'll improve the harness to, uh, accom uh, to accommodate for that. And last but not least, please contribute to this initiative. So thank you, everyone. Uh, so if you want to connect with me, uh, you can scan this QR code. And this also has the link to the, PC web uh, to the testing harness uh, repository. And we are open for questions. Okay, so we can end it. <laughs> it went pretty quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a question for you, Magnus. <laughs> yeah, what's with this telling everyone to complain to Magnus? No, sorry, that's not actually a question. Okay, so. <clears throat> no, I'm sorry, I missed the very beginning of the talk. You may, <laughs> may have mentioned it there, but are you, like, are we today triggering the new scans on every commit to PG Web? Uh, uh, I would say that, mm, I, please, I did not get the question. Please, can you say it again? So uh, are you triggering, are you rerunning it automatically every time someone uh, commits something on PGWeb yeah. today? Yeah, we, are, we are already doing that. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, and uh, it's also, uh, like, we'll also add uh, things to, like, uh, not send a rep uh, repeating bugs to it. Uh, it yeah. Every six hours. yeah, yeah, it kicks off every six hours, like, four times a day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any more questions? Uh, I think we can end this. So I guess um, one of the questions I have is, do you think that this general testing framework is going to extend well to things like PGCon for you? Yeah, I think uh, that uh, it will be a perfect, uh, perfect choice for this, because most of our stuff is built in Django, right? Yeah. And this entire framework is built f uh, for Django, like with the utilities of Django, and it, uh, it will integrate pretty well. Like, we just need to write the test. Like, all the, infrastructure, all the required things are there like, to set this up. Uh, we just need to write uh, some more tests for these uh, platforms. Yeah. 
And um, one of the other questions I had um, is we didn't end up doing anything for the, the, the cross-site authentication stuff in terms of testing yet, have we? Because that mm -hmm. is something that we also really want to yeah. test. And I don't think yeah, we, we are currently just testing the authentication on the, post, uh, yeah. on the main website. Uh, but we'll extend, like, if it is extended to other, co uh, other websites as well that are hosted under Postgres, we'll end up doing that anyways. Yeah. Like yeah. those tests are there, we just need to put them in the, for that particular way. So thank you everyone. <laughs>